Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to the first part of my full Platinum walkthrough for the Demon Souls Remake. If you haven't seen one of my Platinum walkthroughs before, formerly known as Let's Platinums, then they are, as the title would suggest, full walkthroughs. I take you through the entire process, even if that means multiple playthroughs. And that will be the case with Demon Souls, it's going to take just over one and a half playthroughs for the Platinum. The only parts I won't be showing are cutscenes and dialogue. But with this being a Souls game, that's not too much of a problem anyway. Now these guides aren't recorded on the fly, everything has been practiced and there is no time wasted. I'm going to show you the most direct and efficient route to the Platinum. I won't be using glitches or anything, but we will be using save manipulation, or save scumming if you want to call it that. For instance, for the two separate endings, we'll do one, then reload the save and do the other. This will require that you have a PS Plus subscription, you cannot use a USB stick to download save files on the PS5. I know. Now Demon's Souls has some complex mechanics and I will be going over them in this video. That's why we're just going to do the introduction today. So the first part of the game. I want everyone to understand these mechanics so I'll presume that you haven't played a Souls game before. If you have, please don't think I'm being condescending. I just want everyone on the same page here. Now trophy wise, the game looks pretty simple on the surface. Most of them are for killing bosses, some for killing bosses with special conditions met, rescuing certain NPCs and finding all spells, miracles and rings. Now this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Certain rings require very special conditions to be met. But don't worry, I will explain all about that during this video. I think that's it for the setup, we're going to start the game now and take it slow through the tutorial area while I explain some of the fundamentals. Right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go offline. So on your PS5, go to the network settings and turn it offline. This isn't essential, but it helps with regards to world and character tendency. You don't want anyone invading you and messing things up until you're ready. You will need to do it at some point, so just turn it off for now. Uh, next is gender, so type A or B. So type B is male. Um, it doesn't matter really, but it can help with regards to armor sets. Um, the only reason I say it doesn't matter is because you can change it later on, unlike the uh, the original. Uh, so we've got Derek the Demon Hunter here, and then starting class. This is going to be a magic-based build that we're doing here. Um, so we, it's up to you, it's completely up to you. Whichever you want to do, whichever class you want, uh, you can see the soul level and the kind of stats at the side there. Um, we're going to go with royalty at the bottom. You're going to start at soul level 1, so that gives you the most um, chance to level up to the way you want it. And we're going to start with magic, basically. Um, it's super powerful in this game, and it's probably, as a starting class, one of the best to go with. It's, it's the most simple to sort of uh, work out. And you can stay at a distance, which is always good. So these are your starting gifts. The providential ring is the only one you want to take don't take anything else, that's the only way to get that ring, and we do need it for the trophy, so take that ring. I can't stress that part enough. Right, let's start. There's my Viking. Derek the, De the Demon Hunter, the Viking, off we go. So this is the first area, this is tutorial. There's nothing to pick up here, otherwise there would in the top corner, there's going to be little labels, um, what you can expect to find next, that's going to be in the next videos. Um, so get an idea with sw switching your weapons, so right hand and left hand, you have here, we have a sword, and we have our uh, catalyst, which is for s casting spells. And then we have our armor, which is really low magician armor. It doesn't really do anything. We have our rings, ammo, and then items. We'll go over this again later on. But just get uh, the, the left D-pad is for switching your left hand. The right D-pad is for switching your right hand. So you can switch between sword and catalyst on, uh, on the fly, basically. And then we're going to do the first enemy. This guy doesn't attack, so just get used to moving around him, how they kind of react to you, if you like. Um, yeah, so just get get around him. I'm going to go over him for a backstab. I'm going to show you the different type of attack. So we have backstab here. So, uh, yeah, if you get behind an enemy and you push into them with a left stick and press R1 to attack with a sword or any sort of melee weapon, you're going to do a, a really powerful attack. The same can be done from the front, which is called a riposte, but first you'll need to parry them, which is where our shield comes in. We've got the buckler shield, which is kind of a parrying shield, so if you press L2 just at the right time, you're going to throw their arm back and it's going to leave them open to an R1 riposte attack, which is basically like a backstab from the front, and it's going to do a lot of damage as well. 
Parrying is going to take some getting used to. We have the Buckler Shield, which is good for parrying. It has a bigger window. But we will be changing that later on. So now we have got the Catalyst out. We did a bit of magic there. That's Soul Arrow, so that's the starting magic spell that we have for the Royalty. So for, to start with Royalty, we get that spell. We get... Um, Soul Arrow, so that's one of those already got. We don't need to worry about that anymore. And we also get a ring as well. The Fragrant Ring, which is going to allow us to use magic. And the blue bar there will go down as we use it. And the Fragrant Ring is going to increase it again. Otherwise, it will just go down and we need to use some uh, consumables, which we're going to see later on. So yeah, we got the two, we've got two rings and a spell already ticked off. They can be found in the game. Uh, apart from that one starting gift, all other rings and things can be found. Depending on your character, you'll get different weapons and things like that. Uh, weapons we don't actually need to worry about for a trophy, which is nice. That was in the original and one of the more annoying parts. Um, so yeah, with this bit, just get used to what you're doing, killing these enemies, basically. Uh, move around them. These are the weak ones, and ultimately it doesn't matter if you die. The idea of this area is you're going to die. Um... And move to the Nexus. So this is just the tutorial at this point. So you're going to see the blue bar is going to be going up there slowly. And that's because of the ring we're, we're wearing as part of the royalty. We will be switching rings and weapons and shields. We're going to be switching the shield uh, fairly soon. Uh, because the one we use doesn't actually give any protection really. It's just for parrying. Um, healing items we have starting are the grasses. There, There's different grades of grasses that give you more health. Um, it's not like in Dark Souls if you played that. There's no Estus. Um, it doesn't refill. You have to think more like Bloodborne. You need to find it and buy it. Um, yeah, so these enemies now are human. These are a bit more powerful. So, yeah, beware um, with these guys compared to the others. They're going to hurt more. So you can see here how many hits it's taking off these R2s. Uh, R1s hit, sorry. So R1 is normal attack. Um, you're going to see your stamina the green bar go down as you do it and once that's empty you can't attack anymore um r2 is a harder hit which takes up more stamina and then l1 is magic which is when you have the catalyst or r1 is magic when you have the catalyst out um and that's a definitely a good idea is hit these guys these uh, blue-eyed knights with the catalyst because it's going to take them down they will hurt if they hit you but we'll be seeing more of those later on in the uh, the main area, in the first area, Boletaria. So these are items, anything that glows like this, it's very, very obvious in this version of Demon Souls. Uh, you can see items from a long way away. There, you can just see the glow. Crossbow guy, either just move slight to the side or roll. Um, projectiles don't track you so much. There are a few that do, but most projectiles just sort of go in a straight line, like arrows and fireballs and things. So you can just move left and right or roll. Uh, you have iframes, so as you roll, you are invincible, and rolling through people's attacks is going to be a thing you're going to want to get used to. There's me at parrying. I don't use parrying often, as you can see. Um, I just sort of flap around my shield and don't really do anything. You'll get used to that. I don't use it often. I mean, we are um, a wizard here, or we're, well, it's the wizard set that we're wearing, the wizard, wizard armor, so I suppose we are a wizard. We're using magic, so keeping our distance is what we want to do. And uh, we will be gearing a bit towards melee as well, because we will get in situations where we need to do it. We're actually going to get a really good sword um, at the beginning of probably the second video, uh, which is going to help with magic as well. It builds off magic, uh, not builds, it gains its stats from magic. So, um, yeah, and it helps give us that blue bar back as well so it's really good to get early on here's our first boss vanguard demon don't worry if you die you're supposed to you can beat him don't use any consumables just let him kill you go for it if you want get used to kind of rolling through attacks or whatever um don't use any consumables just save them uh, and just see how far you get so use your magic i wouldn't go using the sword you're not going to really do much um yeah and just get used to rolling how the uh uh, sort of iframes work as an enemy attacks you roll and uh, try not to get hit if you time it perfectly the attack will not hit and you'll roll straight through it and not get hurt at all so that is a big part of this as well um, yeah you can win this fight it is possible and you're gonna see me die in a minute it is possible but you'll get killed anyway it the game wants you to die so either even if you you 
past this guy, you'll get a special cutscene, that's it. You'll get killed a different way. And you'll end up here at the Nexus. So I've cut the cutscene out here, and this is our safe place, our hub world, so to speak. And um, yeah, this is where we will just go. We'll be finishing the video here. I'm just going to explain a few things about this area and uh, a few of the stats and things like this. So this statue here is actually in this version. Um, you can't interact with it yet. We'll do it later on. This is where you change your sex. You need to play um, pay it souls. I think it's 25,000. You change your gender and uh, ask for forgiveness if you accidentally hit an NPC. Do not ever attack any of these NPCs in here or anyone who is not violent towards you. Um, I'll point them out as we go. Don't attack vendors or anything. It is extremely important. So we have here are the Archstones. These are our worlds. So we have five of them. There's one broken one there as well, number six. We have, starting from the left, Voluntarian Palace, Stonefang Tunnel, Tower of Latria, Shrine of Storms, and Valley of Defilement. We're going to be doing them in roughly the same order as we just saw but we're going to start from the bottom uh, left and work our way round and do it that way this guy here is Stockpile Thomas bit of a sad story to go with this guy we'll uh, see that later on uh, but he holds your storage box so you have a weight limit with re with regards to the items you can carry now unlike the, f the original game um, if you are full of items, you can just pick it up and send it to Stockpile Thomas and he will uh, he will get hold of it and you can come and get it from him later on. This guy here is a, a smith. He will repair equipment and um, upgrade equipment. He's not the best one. There's a better one later on. Um, so you can also purchase stuff from him as well. So you can see here he upgrades stuff. You need different materials, so sharp stone shard for the rapier. Uh, the buckler is hard stone. Yeah, hard stone. So it's all different types of stones and things. There's lots of them. Um, we're going to keep that very basic and not do too much of that uh, because we are just a, a mage, so it's not too important. Here are some consumables. Fresh spice. You're going to have to get used to that. That gives you your blue bar back. And then we have um, healing items, weapons. Heater shield is what we're going to buy eventually. It is a better shield than the one we have. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it for everybody who's in the Nexus at this point. It will open up again once we beat the first world. Um, so just to finish this video off here, we will look at the stats and equipment and things. So yeah, get used to this page. This is your right and left hand, um, your armor. You want to keep it low. So you can see the top corner there, you have equipment burden. So 9 out of 37 is our weight versus our weight limit which is 24% you want to keep that low so we can roll quickly and move quickly the higher it is the slower you will move here are all our items so it's important I will go more into that when we get sort of switching equipment and things um, move across to status and here we go we have our class we have our type body our body type we have our soul level we're just one so we have lots of soul levels to go we can just do it exactly how we want it Attributes, which is vitality, is your health, intelligence, uh, is how many, how much MP you have, how much uh, blue bar you have, and how much, um, how many slots you have. So every now and again, you'll get an extra slot for another spell. Endurance is for your stamina. Uh, strength is obviously for strength. Um, it helps with uh, carry weight and weapons that scale off strength. So how hard you hit things. Uh, dexterity is for things like bows and uh, more intricate weapons like daggers and stuff. Uh, magic is what we'll be focusing on, is for, to do with magic power. Uh, faith is for miracle power and luck is kind of a dead stat that we will never use. It's to do with item discovery and uh, defense. So we have all there, we have HP, MP, stamina. Um, after that we have equip burden and item burden. So equip burden is what we have equipped and then item is what we're carrying in general uh, you want to keep these fairly low at all times really item discovery is how how many good items you'll find when people die and then we have our strength of weapons magic power and defenses down the side this will all go up as we upgrade i'll show that all later on as we upgrade for the first time or level up for the first time here is world tendency so it's really not that obvious when you look at the bottom the little circles underneath each area 
you can't really see. Well, basically, there are seven levels or seven stages to world tendency. So they're all at neutral now, and they go either towards white or black. White, things get easier. Black, things get harder. That's the easiest way to remember it. So we do need to get all of our worlds up to white. So the way we're going to do that is get by killing bosses. The way we're not going to get it down to black again is by dying in human form. Whenever we turn to human form, which will be every time we kill a boss, we're going to come back to the Nexus and kill ourselves. We need to be in soul form. I'll explain about the differences between human and soul form at the beginning of the next video when we get started. But yeah, basically we want to move it as high towards white so we can get it to pure white um, by the end of the game because we need certain events to happen. And then we're going to shift it all the way down to black because we need certain other events to happen. And then you think, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> no, it's very difficult to understand uh, from a new, a new player perspective, but we'll get into it as we go. Just know that we need everything towards pure white. So most importantly, don't die in human form. You can die as many times as you want in soul form. Again, I'll explain that later. Right, next we have character to character tendency. This is different to world tendency. Basically, um, this is how good or bad you are. So if you're white, we want it to get it to pure white. So this is why you do not kill NPCs. We need to get it to pure white for a certain reason, and then we need to get it all the way down to pure black for a different reason. Again, we're going to go through this, but increased attack is when it's at white, and then your HP goes down when you're in black. That's the, the black and white of it, I suppose. Uh, and yeah, certain events will happen. We need someone to appear, and that's pure black. So again, just don't kill anyone. And the final thing we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to quit. So make sure when you quit this game, you don't just turn it off. You go down to exit game and then save and exit. And then once you do that, you are fine. You can uh, leave the game. Uh, yeah, and that's where we're going to leave it now. So yeah, that was just a brief explanation. It's it, it goes and will go into a lot more detail. It can be pretty complex with regards to world and character tendency. Just know that as I'm playing, I'm going to be explaining everything and... I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. If I just lay it all on you now, it's not going to make that much sense without context. So, yeah, we're going to see it in action starting at the beginning of the next video. I'll be going through things. We'll go to 1 1 Boletarian Palace. Right, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.